patience as an important quality in the practice. The word for patience, kanti, also means endurance, the willingness to stick with things over the long haul. How does the long haul, or this willingness to stick with things over the long haul, translate into the present moment? In other words, how does it translate into something besides laziness? It translates as meticulousness. You're very careful in the steps that you follow in the practice, step by step by step, not jumping over any steps, not trying to leap from the first floor up to the fifth, but willing to go up the stairway step by step by step, paying careful attention to what you're doing. This is a principle that's important in so many ways in the practice. It means putting your trust in little things, the little things that you can do in the present moment, and having the trust that they'll build to the bigger results that you want. We all want the big results. We want major happiness, major peace major clarity in our minds. And we look at the step-by-step-by-step by step by step increments that we have to follow, and sometimes it's easy to get impatient with them and not to trust them, wonder how could tiny little things like this build to something so big like release, nirvana. And yet it's precisely the little things that get in the way of the big results we want. And so we have to Pay careful attention to them. Each moment that the mind pulls away from a desire for peace or a desire for true happiness, it's a little pull, but over time it adds up. And the best way to fight it is with a path that is made out of little steps, but over time they add up too. And also the willingness to look at the details means that your powers of perception, your powers of insight get very sharp. Many times you'll notice that your practice seems to hit a plateau where it's not going anywhere. And if you look really carefully, you'll, you'll realize that you haven't been looking very carefully. In other words, things get switched over to automatic pilot, and you're not paying very much attention, just kind of going through the motions. And as a result, the results don't come the way you'd like them to. It's in being very precise about what you're doing. For example, focusing on the breath. Be really precise about any little tiny piece of tension or discomfort, dis-ease in the breath. Don't slough over it, because it's in paying attention to the little details that brings you more and more and more into the present moment. If you're sloughing over the details, you're sloughing from the past into the future and skipping over the present. Which is why this attention to detail is so important, the attention to each breath, how it feels in the different parts of the body. And you develop your sensitivity more and more so you can see where it's really tense, and where it's less tense and less tense, until it's even the slightest little bit of tension you don't want. Work through it, work through it. Even though it may seem like a little thing, if you leave it, it, it may be a seed that grows into something larger. There's a story they tell in the canon of a young tree. Where a creeper seed comes and lands right next to the tree, and the other friend trees, uh, the devas and the other trees, come around to the, the deva and this tree. They say, don't worry about that seed. Maybe fire will burn it, or a woodman will chop, step on it, or a peacock will eat it, or maybe it's not even a seed. Well, it turns out that it is a seed, and it turns into a creeper, and the creeper grows up around the tree. And at first, the the deva in the tree doesn't understand why they were so concerned. After all, the, the creeper seems nice and soft, tender. But then as the creeper gets bigger and bigger, and the creeper finally forms a canopy over the whole tree, pulls down the major limbs, destroys the tree. So this is one of the reasons why you have to be careful about little things, because sometimes there are little seeds that can grow. But at the same time, by being attended to little things, you're beginning to plant seeds in the mind as well, different kinds of seeds, seeds from stronger mindfulness, stronger alertness, stronger willpower, determination. 
all the perfections that are needed for awakening. They start with little things, and they keep going with little steps, little steps, just being very, very attentive, very, very precise in what you're doing. In other words, at the same time not being tense in what you're doing, but just really watching things very carefully. This is why there's so much emphasis on keeping a broad sense of awareness. If it gets very narrow and <clears throat> tense, then it's hard to maintain. But if your range of awareness is broad and yet your attention to the detail that you're focusing on is precise and sharp, it's a state of awareness that you not only is easy to maintain, it maintains itself. It becomes a source of strength for the mind. And you want to take this same attention to detail to all aspects of your life. Not only when you're sitting here with your eyes closed, but also when you're dealing with other people, doing work out in the orchard or at the house. Whatever your activity, you want to be as precisely with the present moment as possible. So that skillful or unskillful states, when they arise in the mind, don't pass by unnoticed. And this is what it means to be uncomplacent in your practice of concentration, as we chanted just now. Beings being heedful. We see danger and respects being heedful. What the danger? Well, the dangers come from little things because they can turn into big things. There's a passage in the canon where the Buddha talks about four things you shouldn't want to overlook simply because they're small. One is a small fire, another is a small snake, another is a small prince. The prince may be small right now, but in a couple of years he's going to grow up and he can carry a grudge from age three to age who knows how far. The fourth one is a young contemplative, because sometimes young contemplatives have gotten further in their meditation than you might assume. Those are outside small things you shouldn't be careless or complacent about. The inside ones, though, are even smaller. And yet they can do even more damage. Speaking of the unskillful side, on the skillful side, they can do a lot of help if you look after them. So what this means is not despising the little victories you have in your meditation, not being careless about the little defeats. Because it's step by step by step that you get more and more precisely into the present moment which is where things are going to open up. If you're not paying careful attention here, you're not going to see the opening. So it's not a distraction from the larger issues of the practice to focus on little things. It's actually in the little things that the larger ones appear. So always keep that in mind, especially when you find that your meditation has hit a plateau or seems to be sliding downhill. Often it's a problem of not paying careful attention, simply going through the motions. What a John Sawat would say is not having enough respect for what you're doing, not enough respect for the little things that you're doing each moment. So we try to do this with an attitude of lightness, but at the same time a sense of real dedication. And that's how the principles of endurance and patience, which sound like long-term principles, translate into the present moment. What we're doing right here, right now. 